Hello YouTube, I'm MPC. Today I'm making another tutorial for you guys. Today's tutorial is continuing on in my swing series, and this particular tutorial is actually the second part of a tutorial where I'm going to show. I'm showing you how to make a quiz game using the swing interface in Java. So we just finished creating this radio button class. And it will start off, let's go ahead and comment out this main method because this is not the driver class. As I've said, this quiz class that we're going to make later is going to create a whole bunch of these and it's going to organize them. All right. So um, but before we move on to that, let's go ahead and set up an action listener. So first, of course, got to implement everything. And um, I, have, I didn't really mention it in the previous tutorial, but... I've been importing a bunch of stuff, so if you get errors where it's saying you haven't imported it, that's because you probably haven't imported it. And this is, these are all the names for the importing stuff. So for now, make sure to import your action list or action event because we're going to be using them. So uh, let's go down here. So when you implement action listener, you have to have the action perform method. So this is going to be triggered whenever the next or finish button is pressed. That's the only thing that's going to be listened to. So you've got to add add action listeners to those in the constructor right over here. All right. So first off, we're going to create an object representing the source that this event came from. All right. I've done this before. So this would either be our next or our finish button. So if it's equal to next, do this. If it's equal to Finish, do this, and and that stuff for later, I think. Yeah, that stuff for later. Okay, so when we trigger next, we want to tell our driver class, hey, the user click next, that's time to move on to the next frame. This frame doesn't have control over that, so that's why we need to tell the driver class to do so. Which is why we set up this variable in the constructor so that we could keep track of the driver class and we can tell the driver class what to do. So in this case, you'll see that we say we we end up saying quiz on next after we check a few. So looks like it's been long enough. I should go ahead and start start the driver class. So here's our driver class right here. So you know it's JFrame just like you're used to. Um, let's go ahead and check out the main method and see how it starts out. It starts out we create a new object of this class and in there we go through like the standard swing stuff. Name of the window, resizable, set size, default close operation. Um, okay, and we set the layout to cards. I actually created that lay layout up here. Card layout, card equals new card layout. So, I kind of went into this in the intro, but I'll go ahead and explain it again. A card layout does not organize components on t on the screen. They it when you add components to it, it adds it to a deck of cards. It adds it as if it's a deck of cards. So every component you add to this is just one card in a deck. And this is like the dealer of the deck. You can say, give me another card, it'll give you another card, and that'll be what shows up on the screen. And uh, it'll keep track of them, a lot like an array does, but it's a little bit nicer than that. So, okay, so that's how that is set up. So we set the layout to cards, and then we add the panel, and then we set the pistol to true. Okay, and then we do some stuff here, adding our questions to the card. So but in this case what we're gonna have it do is we're gonna have our card layout keep track of all of our radio questions. Because remember these are panels. So all of our panels representing different questions. So that's what the card layout is going to do. So to start off we're gonna to have to create a bunch of questions for it to keep track of. So that's what we're doing right doing right here. We have an array of those J J oh we have an array of those radio question classes. So you know we set up a whole bunch of them. We a whole bunch of them. So the first argument is the question. The second argument is an array of the possible answers. Third is the correct answer, and the fourth is 
this. This is a quiz class that it'll refer back to when it needs to. So um, for our array, instead of setting up an array down here, I actually set up a double double array over here. So this says call zero in the double array, which is saying it will call this array. So in this case, what is the capital of the Netherlands? It will call this array, giving you the options Enschede, Amsterdam, Den Haag, or Berlin. And these are all of those questions. And you can see that the second question is a different answer. And it will um, it's indexed differently. And that's how that whole thing is set up. This is one of the reasons why I decided to explain this rather than type it a lot, because this, that's, what, 60 lines, 50 lines, and that would have taken forever to have typed out. Okay, so here's the process of adding them. Okay, so this this is um, here we add each of them to our panel. So uh, first we determine number of questions, okay? So that way we can loop through them, knowing the number of questions. I probably could have just taken that and put it right here. I've done. I usually do that, but this side not to this time. And so for each one of the questions we number, it's a J panel. So we're adding that J panel to the R panel. And remember, it's a layout. The it's a card layout, so it'll take it in as another card of the deck, and you know, shuffle them, and it will show us the one that it wants to. So, uh, you know, this is the object we're going to add to the panel, and then because the card layout, there's another argument, and that is what this can be called. So, rather than indexing it as numbers like an array does, as this is indexed as 0, this is indexed as 1, this is indexed as 2. We use strings to index things for the card layout. So when you're when we talk to the card layout, we don't say give me card number 57. We say give me the queen of hearts or what whatever. And that's what this is. This is the string by which we index it. So the way I index these is I call Call them Q0, Q1, Q2. And I'm, it's basically the same as numbering, but you, I want you to understand that you have the option to give them a complicated name, name scheme if you wanted to. So yeah, but we're gonna be giving them a fairly simple naming scheme: Q0, Q1, Q2, etc., etc. Okay, and then we're going to create a new random number. So we're going going to show a rand one of the, one of these panels we're gonna pick one at random is what we're gonna do. So we um we have our i equal to a random number um in the range of the number of questions that we have is what this is doing. And then we're going to say cards dot show. So we're gonna use this is um referencing a cards layout and we're telling that layout to show on our panel, this particular card. Remember that, so that this is how we index them. So, so that will pick a card at random and show it. This is why we use the card layout because we can do this very easily using card layout, and then you know add add the panel and uh, set it visible. All right, so let's move on. Before I continue talking about how the methods in the quiz class is set up, um, there are a couple of variables in both classes I need to kind of explain that we're keeping track of. So, first off, in the radio question class, there's the int selected and the boolean used variables that we haven't talked about yet. I'll go ahead and talk about selected first. So, in our action performed, we also have listeners on the buttons. So when I loop through the buttons over here in the constructor, I went ahead and added a listener to each one of them. See that? So uh, I loop through each of them, 
and for each one I check whether our source, the source of the event, came from that button. And if it did, we set select to go that one. I couldn't find an easy way to figure out which one was selected from the button group, so this is how I end up deciding how to do it. So that way, that variable represents whichever one is selected at this point in time. So that's how that one works. The other one is boolean use which represents whether this one this particular question has been used or not so remember this is just one of many questions and um, I don't want to keep asking the same questions multiple times so I created this variable so we can figure out whether this particular one has been used and if it has been used then we'll move on to the next one so the way we keep track whether this one was used is uh, right here. When we hit next, every time we hit next we show the result telling whether our answer is right or wrong. And if it was correct, meaning we're ready to move on to the next question, then we're going to move on to the next question and we're going to set used equal to true. That's how that is set up. So let me go ahead and tell you, tell you how to show the result works. So uh, we get the text from whatever the answer was, so we we have our array of responses. We we don't select this now, so we um grab the selected uh, selected answer from our string of answers. So this was this isn't from the buttons. This is from the uh, string that was inputted to the class. Or I think it was. Uh, this is okay. Responses. Um, I'm sorry. Okay, so responses is the button array. So we're grabbing the button that was selected, and we're grabbing the text from it. So this string text it represents the text that was selected. Okay, and here's the variable in the quiz class called total which we'll talk about later that represents how many questions have been asked so far and we have another one called wrongs which represents how many times um, the user have gotten a question wrong or have gotten questions wrong okay so if our selected one is the correct answer okay we're going to pop up a message saying da 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 is correct so if you picked green it'll say green is correct well done and if it's wrong number one will increase the number of wrong answers by one and we will say da -da 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 is wrong so that's how the show result works and uh, just so total in the quiz class, is increment every time a question is, every time we try to move on to the next next question, every time we we think we're ready for a question. So if we have one question, and we click next three times, and we get it right on the third time, total will have been increased by three because we tried the question three times, and wrongs will be increased by two because we got it wrong twice two of those times. So that's how total and wrongs work. So, uh, yeah, moving on, and here, when we say next, we tell the quiz to boom on the next window, so let me just go ahead and show you how that works. So, here the next method. So, first off, we check if total wrongs minus wrongs is equal to number of questions, because, remember, um, we keep, so, the total minus wrongs, will give us number of corrects, right? Because total is corrects and incorrects. If we subtract out the incorrects, it'll give us the corrects. And the only th and when we get an answer correct, we don't see it again. So number of corrects, if the number of corrects is the same as the number of questions, then we're out of questions. So that's what this is saying. If we're out of questions, show the summary, which will show pop a window with a summary of all the statistics and all that. And I guess I'll show you that now. So that's what this is. It'll use the J option pane to show us a message. 
and it'll say, hold on, here are your results. You say number of incorrect answers, number of wrongs, number of correct answers, which is total minus wrongs. We say number of incorrect answers per question. I just kind of made up, made up statistics that we could use, which is the wrongs divided by the questions and the percent correct, like that. And we say system exit because we're done. That's how the show summary works. So, but if we're having all the questions, if we're ready for another one, then we go through this process. So we set up a random number object and we set i equal to zero and then we go through this while loop. So found represents whether we found another question to use. So we're going to keep going through this while we until we found something. So while we haven't found anything, keep keep repeating through it. So i is going to be a random number within our question range. And if that question has not been used, so if that if question dot used, not if that question has not been used, then we're going to set found equal to true, which means that this loop breaks and we'll go ahead and show that particular card. So that's how that logic is set up. I believe that's everything for the quiz class. So that's what happens when you press the next button. It goes through this, clicks the next. And if we hit finish, it'll just show summary. So I, I yeah, that's everything. I'm pretty sure. That, yeah, that's, that's everything. So I hope it made sense to you. Hope you can now say that you understand card layout and box layout but let's go ahead and play with it so here's our program which of the following is one of the seven wonders of the ancient world hmm I don't know let's see I'm trying to decide whether I should go through this pretending to not know anything or if I should go through this Telling you how I thought these up. I'll just tell you the logic of it. So, um, whoa. Shadow of the Colossus is a video game. No. Parthenon and Colosseum are common mistakes. I probably would have answered them myself. But Lighthouse of Alexandria is actually the only one that's considered one of the wonders of the ancient world. So then it says Lighthouse of Alexandria is correct. What is a curve? My roommate told me this one. Apparently, this was on uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, and he was proud of himself because he got it right. It's from a very, very sp specific subject. So, um, so uh, that's why most people don't know it, including me, when I started this. So let's just get into it wrong, just a heck of it. So that was to tell us that's wrong and notice that it says what well, we can put it here and I press ok then I, when I click the right answer I'll go through and it'll say with the cuts correct so that's how that one works so now it'll say we've answered a total of three questions because we tried to hit next three times and of those two of them were right one of them was wrong so that's how the re data recording is working who discovered the number E? Erasmus is a Dutch philosopher. Fibonacci did other stuff. He's from Italy. Fibonacci sequence is one of the things he invented. Archimedes is from Greece and he estimated pi to like four or five digits. So Euler is still actually the correct one. He's Swiss. And um, I'm just, I like math. So I know all that one. I know all that stuff. Okay. Um, Calvin Netherlands is um, Amsterdam, it's not Enschede, it's not Den Haag, and it's not Berlin. Berlin's the capital of Germany. Amsterdam is the correct one. Uh, true or false drunk driving is more dangerous than driving tired. Um, that is actually false. It's more dangerous to drive tired than it is to drive drunk. I've only done one of those. You can guess which one. 
Um, which of the following is not made in China? Nothing is not made in China. E everything is made in China. You cannot find anything that's not made in China. Uh, plays made by Shakespeare. Hamlet's made by Shakespeare. Lion King is based off Hamlet, but it's not di directly made by Shakespeare. How many strings are on a guitar? I think six. Six is correct, okay. Uh, platypus mammal, yes it is. I'm just kind of wasting time right now. Uh, what? Hmm, that's odd. It Apparently there's a glitch where it asks them about the platypus twice. I, last time I tested this, it worked. It did the same thing. Okay, so here is how it works. On average, we, we answer incorrectly 10% of the time. There are 10 correct answers, this one incorrect one. 90%. Um, 90% accuracy, which I th don't think is quite right, actually. Because we answered 11 times, and one of them was incorrect, so... Number of correct divided by the total. Hmm. You know, I bet we don't have, I bet we don't have 10 questions, I bet you that's it. Do I have platypus in here twice? I do have platypus in here twice. That's where that glitch is coming from. So take away that one, and we're good. So now you've seen um, how you can make a quiz game, and you can go through this and quite easily make your own quiz and just add new things in here. So that's uh that's how you do that. I hope you found this interesting. I hope you understand everything. I hope you learned something about card layouts and box layouts. And with that, I guess I'll see you guys next time.